everybody, uh, Greg Freel here, Freel Thing Podcast. Uh, I'm here with Cara Zivani. I got it right. You got I, it right. I wrote it out phonetically. I love that. I mm -hmm. love that. Thank you. It really means a lot. Good. Um, I practiced. So uh, Cara is here um, and we're just talking. Uh, I'm not going to swear, uh, but we're talking nonsense and just talking about absolute nonsense. Nonsense. Um, we we're actually just, we start talking about tattoos. We'll get onto that in a second. But before we actually get onto this, um, for the folks at home, a little thirty seconds on who you are and why am I spending my afternoon talking to you? Oh, that's a brilliant afternoon. Um, my name is Cara Zavani, and I am business development manager for Adeo Group in Glasgow. So it is my job to talk to companies and be able to help them in regards to their marketing or website or any development needs that they have and you're talking to me because how on earth could I say no to having an hour chatting nonsense with you? It's half an hour. Just <laughs> we're limiting the time. Um, half an hour. Quick quick question. Do, do, do you pronounce the D yes. in Zavani? You go Z. Z Zvani. Yeah. yeah, 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 that's it. Zvani. Yeah. Right, okay. Wow. Zvani. Yeah. Okay. Can I, I was going to tell you a joke that? there. Do you have a middle name? So I, but what I usually... I do. Oh, right, well, what's that? Oh, we might, this is going to be... You see, it's not going to be half an hour. Uh, so I have two middle names. I have Eleanor, which is my mum's oh, name. That's my mum's name. And I have... That's my mum's name. Is it? Mm. Is it? Yeah, Eleanor. It's a beautiful name. E-L-E-A-N-O-R. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. There we go. Synergies, Greg. Synergies. Mm -hmm. um, and then my other surname, my other middle name is Kulukazi. So Kulukazi. That's means... my dad's name. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so Kulukazi Freel. Yeah, we're we're definitely um, related in some way. We just we just call him Kul for short. <laughs> So, gosh, this is going to take so long. Mm -hmm. Kulukazi means firstborn in um, my South African tribe that I'm from. And it also means the Makadze of the family. So it means that I am the person who has to remember everything about the family. If there's any family feuds, I also get the dowry, should anyone in my family get married. Okay. So, yeah, it's quite cool. And it's cool, Kulukazi. Very nice. So... <clears throat> strong South African connection with your family. Um, yeah. You're born here though, yes? Or were you born in... Yes, born in Edinburgh. Mm -hmm. Born in Edinburgh. Um, then we moved across to Zimbabwe when I was six months old or something like that. Mm -hmm. And then came back to Edinburgh and then I fell in love with Glasgow when I was 17. And after a night out at the garage, went there, just felt like I was at home. <laughs> Went home, wow. packed my bags, and then the, moved the to height of culture, mm -hmm. the garage. <clears throat> I have to say though, I have a very, very strong place in my heart for the garage nightclub because I saw Prince in the garage nightclub. <gasps> oh my gosh! March fifteenth. Why was Prince in the garage? He was doing an after show gig after he did the SEC. Oh my gosh! And how cool is that? And as a kid, I was kind of like, if I ever get to see Prince doing an after show gig, it'll be like I've died and gone to heaven. And they yeah. announced on Radio Clyde about six o'clock that Prince is going to be doing an after show thing tonight. And I'd seen him in the SEC the night before. And this was the second night. Mm -hmm. So I was like, oh, not at the second night. So I'm going to go now. So me and my brother went down mm -hmm. at six o'clock at night and we stood outside the garage nightclub and we were first in the queue. And we waited there for oh five hours before they let us in. Uh, and then security guys were like, we'll let you, like the f first four, in before everybody else um, because we'd been waiting for so long. So I got, got in and I'm like, okay, he's probably going to be about here. I'll be right in the middle of you know, the stage. Uh, and then we wait yeah. and then eventually he arrived about <clears throat> one. And and like, you know, and the band had sort of set up and all this kind of thing. But I was not going to get totally excited about this until he actually came on stage because he'd have a yeah. habit of, he books it, the band's there, everything's set up and ready to go. And he goes, nah, I don't feel like it. Anyway, yeah. he came in the, the yeah, which is his right exactly to do that. sure. Uh, he's Diva, yeah. uh, but he came in the fire exit at yeah. the back, and the police went nuts. There was like you know there was, oh there was no way gosh. they were sticking to the fire regulations. It was like heaving, absolutely heaving. Yeah, 
Um, oh my gosh. And he played for about an hour and a half. And it was, I literally remember it like it was two weeks ago. It was phenomenal. Oh. I'm the biggest Prince fan. And was he right, was right, he right in front, right in front of Right in front, like right there. Oh, he was. Um, oh my days. And then I have his guitar plectrum, which I have in a box somewhere, um, which, you know, it was right in front of me. I'm like, I'm having one of those. Uh, you know, there was a girl standing next to me and she was like reaching out for it and I'm sure I punched her in the face. But I was kind of like, that's mine. <laughs> you know, but um, yeah, it was, it was How amazing. How cool is amazing. that? Anyway, so the Garage Nightclub, you went to the Garage Nightclub and you fell in love with Glasgow. I went to the Garage Nightclub. Yeah, I fell in love with Glasgow and then packed my bags, moved through the next day with not a friend, mm -hmm. not a job, not anywhere to live. And yeah. The rest is history, Greg. That was my, I just fell in love with mm -hmm. Glasgow. I just thought it was, was brilliant. But my, my father was from South right. Africa. Um, but my mum my and dad split up when I was 14. Okay. Um, so being in Edinburgh, I kind of just slotted in to being Scottish. So kind of just to, to make myself feel comfortable and feel like I belonged. It was easier to say that I was Scottish and kind of ignore that mm -hmm. side of my, my heritage, which was... Looking back, I understand why I did it. I wish I mm. hadn't. But then having my daughter, um, she was asking everything about obviously all sides of my family. So it's something so that start, you've got back to then. Yeah, definitely. Especially through lockdown. Mm -hmm. I've done lots of like my DNA testing. Have you, you done like the Ancestry.com thing and all that kind of thing? Or? Yeah, yeah. It's fascinating. Fascinating. So I do feel, and I think also because of last year you had... Um, Black Lives Matter and Black History yep. Month and, and you've got time. Like I didn't have any time before to do stuff like that. So um, I definitely feel a lot, I feel the most comfortable having a dual heritage than I ever have in my life. And I just wish that I had felt like that when I was like 14, but hopefully my daughter will. Is that something that you've, you've sort of felt drawn to really just, well, like in the past year or, or was it before then? Yeah, well, See, I'm going to be 40 mm -hmm. this year. So looking back, probably I've always said I've, I've always been very proud to be mixed race yeah. and very proud of my um, lineage of my father's side, as well as my mum's side, obviously. But um, I think definitely the, the, the last year has just made me have time. And then with Black Lives Matter, it affected me in a way that was really bizarre because you had all the the... I was furious and I, I was so angry, but also I was embarrassed because I felt like I should be more so. Does that make sure, it, yeah. even make uh -huh. any sense? Because it just didn't, did you feel like you've been it, denying like it, it for so long that it, you know? Yeah. Yes, 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 absolutely. So, and I think there's a thing of being mixed race that you you never feel completely white, you never feel completely black. So to 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 be supporting Black Lives Matter, and then you're like but i'm not black it was just a very it was a very very strange mm -hmm. time so yeah read read lots of books read read lots of books that i've read before and it's the same with any book when you read it in your 20s yes, yeah. and then you read it 10 years later it's so different so different so yeah a lot of soul searching still lots of um loads loads of reading and loads of listening and talking and going on different webinars and so i just feel like now i'm in a place that i can that my daughter definitely will understand her heritage and be proud of it from do you have any brothers or sisters? I do. So I've got a little sister. Um, so she lives down in London. <clears throat> and then, now I can say it, um, through all the family history and getting in touch with cousins, I've now connected with my half-brother. So um, he was born, when my dad moved back to South Africa, he um, he was born, so there's quite an age difference. But I had never, I had, well, I've still not met him. Um, we do video calls every week right. now, but oh my gosh, Greg, he is like, he is the coolest, pe apart from yourself, the coolest person I could ever imagine. He's he's just he's so intelligent. He's funny. I'm I'm so proud mm -hmm. of him, and I just want the world to open up so that I can just actually get grab to see him, him and then not let him go. Yeah, yeah, because it's it's weird, and Wi-Fi is different in Johannesburg, and, and yeah, it's it's a strange strange one. So yeah, so I can now say I've got two siblings. Wow, and when did you find? Was that something you found out fairly recently? No, I always right. knew. I always knew. Um, but we just never. We, we just hadn't we hadn't connected um and then the families kind of lost touch so it was a lot of and his mum got remarried so i didn't even know what his surname was right, and, okay. and things so it, it was one of my cousins over there he started 
at the university that she lectures in. Mm -hmm. So that's how she found him. So yeah, he's just awesome. He's well, awesome. So very proud. You, you came through to Glasgow. Are you fall in love with Glasgow? Yeah. What was your first yeah. job? <laughs> first job in, in 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 my in my history of jobs. Yeah, yeah. Or my first job in Glasgow. My first job in history of jobs was a paper mm -hmm. round. Um, second job was I sold kitchens and uh, windows. You know those annoying people that used to phone you on your landline at, at tea yes. time and be like, mm -hmm. Mr. Friel, you've won a kitchen. Mm -hmm. It's free. No, no, um, no hidden ties touch, yeah. or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. And they're, 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 that's what I used to do. I was the annoying person that. Mom, I hate you. Shooting. I was going to say neighbours. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Many people did. Many people did. So you did that. And then I loved it. I loved. Yeah, I loved sales. I, I did it part time, and then just decided that I didn't really know what I wanted to do at university. I was kind of average at school, mm -hmm. and then I was like, I was there anything you were drawn to at school? Was there like any like what were your, what were your favourite subjects? Oh, I loved English. English and history were, were, were my favourites. Any of the, cre not, not maths. I, my brain just doesn't Same do maths here. or geography. Can't stand it. And, yeah, and it's confirmed with homeschooling this right, past yes. year. I just don't get it. Um, but it give me something to write or talk mm -hmm. or I loved all of that. Um, but then, I don't know, everyone in my family from my father's side had gone on to being a journalist or a lawyer or a doctor, teacher, and I just didn't want to, especially a teacher. Oh my it sounds gosh, like no, work, I couldn't think it? of anything. Just, you're like, oh. It does sound like work, I know. And I'm sitting in this wee shed, phoning people and then getting paid like a hundred pounds a week for mm. it. I was like, I think I'm just going to do this. I think I'm just going to do this sales thing and, and, and see how it goes. And here... I am mm -hmm. 20 plus years later still in sales and I love it. I but love I think it. that comes down to the fact that you're a, a, a people person completely, you know? Mm -hmm. Agree, yeah, agree I do, at I, any I, point. I, I def <laughs> you are a people person. I am, I'm an extroverted introvert. So it's yes. like, I'm very happy in my own space, my own quiet, I'm very, but with sales, I always say like, you know, the um, Beyonce and Sasha Fierce, you know, mm -hmm. the, the difference mm -hmm. between, that's what I think that sales, I've never met a salesperson who is like all the yeah. time. I think actually in their private life, they're, they're quite just quiet and that's definitely yeah. me. You would just punch <clears> them that, in the face. I think that's yeah. the thing that that's, I mean, I'm, I'm like that. I mean, when I'm on, I'm on. And when I'm not yep. on, I'm quiet and like to read books and, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm not like a wild party guy and you'd probably think that I would be, um, but I'm yeah. not, I'm, I'm yeah. just kind of like, I still want to party with oh, you. Obviously, though, you know, after um, all this. No, I, yeah. can, can I tell you, I think there's just going to be so much of that, you know, like there's you know, been so many people we've got to know over the whole lockdown period um, and all the business pals that we've met, I'm like, we're definitely going to go out and have a few party nights. I think it's definitely going to happen. Absolutely. Uh, and I actually and probably, then be like, probably, oh, I, I think that there's definitely going to be that side that I haven't really indulged up until now that I probably will. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah. But we'll have two pints and then we'll be like, oh, <laughs> yeah. Cause then we're like, oh yeah, yeah. We're that age. Time. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> but then I think what's good between you and I, Greg, is that we knew each other before net before lockdown yes for, for many years in the in the networking mm -hmm. scene um that i'm not going to have that oh you're that tall <laughs> but like i've got colleagues that i've never met that i'm like uh, someone <clears> told me the other day they were six foot two and i was like absolutely not in my mind you're five foot I, seven. I fear How for people who haven't two? met uh, darren christie yet um i haven't have you not met him he's six foot five no, but he's a man mountain yeah he's that's massive. that's 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 I can't even add that up. Yeah, that's a foot and one inch mm -hmm. taller than me. I'm, yeah, no. Yeah, no. He he's a he's a he, very tall man, and I've known, I've known yeah. Darren as long as I've been sort of business networking. I guess the past sort of four or five years. Um, I think he's had a different job every year, to be honest with you. But, <laughs> <laughs> he's a good egg, isn't he? I really Darren, like Darren. Dar and I had Darren one is one, one of my favourite people. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, yeah. Well, let's not compliment yeah, yeah. him on a podcast. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Don't want to say nice things about people that we know. <laughs> Let's just talk about how amazing Greg is. <laughs> Obviously. Um, anyway, that went really. We were we, we started talking about solitaire and tattoos. Yes, before before, before that, yes. and then we've kind of gone quite deep. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Wow. 
Um, How conversation can change. Tattoos, though. Yeah, so you're a tattoo person. I am a tattoo person. I would really like to be like completely covered in tattoos, but I don't think... I got my first tattoo, oh my gosh, when I was like 20, 20 19 oh, or right, 20. Okay. And I, all, I, I made the promise that I was only ever going to get tattoos that meant something. Um, it's funny because I so always ask hodgepodge. people, if somebody's got tattoos, I always ask people about their tattoos because I always think that most people get tattoos for a reason and this is to do with such and such family or this experience or whatever, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. But but then you have like my partner has a has a full sleeve that he got about twenty years ago and he's like, mm -hmm. <laughs> just like the colours and I'm it's just like, like that's I was really oh, really drunk. Arm. <laughs> it was a really good weekend. And a few of those as well. <laughs> but no, I've got one. So so family members. The first one was for my sister. Um, and then when my daughter was born, I'm obsessed with elephants. So you okay. can see these, these are the only tattoos that I kind of have on show. Um, so yeah, got, got, got one. So my mum my had got a Mother's Day card from Lily that, um, that had the sketch of an elephant on it, an elephant and its little calf. Um, so I got that tattooed on my 30th birthday. Um, got, can, do you want me to tell you the funny story about my tattoo? Absolutely. <laughs> So, um, so yeah, so every significant person in my life, I've got a tattoo mm -hmm. about whether that's a, a flower or a, whatever it is. And um, I'm very, very close to my sister's husband. He's one of my bestest friends, Tiwa. And um, he loves Superman, absolutely loves Superman. All the Marvel things, he loves Superman. Mm -hmm. So I thought, you know what? They've been together for a long time. He's been, I've been friends with him for a very, very long time. I'm going to get a tattoo in honour of tea. So I thought what I'll do, and I wonder if you'll get this, when I tell the story, no one gets it right to the end. So what I thought I'll do is I'll get the Superman logo, you know, the S yes. triangle symbol. But instead of an S, I'll get a T. So that's cute, isn't it? So that's because he likes Superman mm -hmm. and it's T and it's right at the top of my thigh. So like no one will see it. It was just for me to have. Mm -hmm. So my friend who's uh, my, my tattoo artist did it, finished it up wiped it and then he's like Cara do you know what that looks like have you got it the tenant sign <laughs> <laughs> and it's mortifying so every time like I've got like if I've got my swimsuit on I'm like people will think like just, I like love tenants just so much heavy drinker proper uh, <laughs> So I've got like all these really nice tattoos and, and but yeah, the tenants. <laughs> got oh the tenants sign. So was that was that one of the first ones? Yeah, mortifying. No, this was just um that was my second last one. Right. So how many? I got the how last many do you one have? I, got. I don't know, Greg. I don't know. Oh, you literally? It, there's that many. Okay, I lost count. Right. No, no. Do you want me to do it one? Two? No, I think maybe about maybe about fourteen. Well, that's quite a lot. In 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 total, yeah. Yeah, so I've, ne I've never got a, a, a cover up. Have you no. not? Not even off your own face. No, you would think. You would think that that would be like the, you the, would the think first thing. You would. Um, but absolutely. You no. Know, um, see, the thing is, because I've got such beautiful skin, I'm like, it's I don't true. want to to mess with that. I mean, if you, you know. I just, I just, I'm not going to mess with that. I know. Um, also, I don't no, like don't. needles, and it'll be sore. Um, and I have a problem with oh. inflicting pain. Like, why would I choose to inflict pain oh. on myself? Not good. It's like... But did you get... You must have had your ears pierced, no. Greg. You're in, you, no. you're in the music industry. You've no. never had You've never had any piercings? Nope. No. I just look really, really camp. And you think I've done all of these things, <laughs> right? Um, but I haven't. No. Uh, the only thing I've, I, I've done is, wow. is, like, the highlights in the hair. That's it. That that's, doesn't involve any needle, nope. any... No, no. 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 So you are you are one of the least rock and roll I am people totally I have not, ever met. I'm kind of just like, wow. Yeah, yeah. It's 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 all just That's it's all just smoke and mirrors, Karen. Yeah. Yeah. But sure, I, I thought that everyone had had their ears pierced. No. No. At some point. No. And you've never wanted to. I thought about it, but I've. I mean, I, I remember trying. Like, like I had one like clipped on at one point. I was like, oh my yeah. god! I just look. It, just, no. no, you know, and you know, and whenever I was single, it was you know, everyone was just like, "You're gay, aren't you?" I'm like, "No, I'm not." But I just kind of had that kind no. of artistic kind of thing, 
Um, but yeah, um, you know, I think you know, I, I I could probably carry it off, maybe. But um, yeah, I don't know. Definitely, no, definitely. It's a funny thing, isn't it? I like how the I like how things have changed with, like obviously I work in a creative industry now and 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 tattoos and oh yeah, I mean everybody's got mad one. hair yeah. and everything like that. Yeah, and it's more acceptable mm -hmm. now, whereas before, like twenty years ago, that would people would have been like, mm. and, and I think there is still well, I know there's still a lot of. Um, people judging the way that you look if you if you rock up with with tattoos mm -hmm. or or lots of piercings and things like that but i do think it's getting better i mean i'm though. sure like if i if i was kind of going full on rock star you know look then you know i would probably would have you know maybe done that but um i've i've always just been kind of like more enrique iglesias rather than full on rock <laughs> you know what i mean I remember Enrique Iglesias instead of Axel yeah, Rose. Yeah, actually, I mean, don't get yeah, me wrong. I mean, okay, I look, okay. I love. There isn't any kind of music that I don't listen to, right? Um, no, there must be, Greg. There must, there must I'm not, be techno. Actually, I do. I, I have a client that I do techno music for every month. Um, <laughs> yeah, and it's really, really full on. Um, and it's like yeah. eh, 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 and that kind of stuff. No. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I remember I dated a, 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 a techno DJ once. And Bit of a stop start you know relationship when you're like, now. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> but you know when you want to say, oh, I was going to say something serious sorry, there. Sorry. You know, you want to support someone. Mm -hmm. You want to support you're kind of like, you're shy. I just couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. Do, like, what are you doing? Why are you listening to that? Mm -hmm. Why are you playing that for other people? And also... I think that when I said I loved happy hardcore, I think that kind of was the nail in the co coffin as well because I just thought it was similar. But there was no vocals on techno, mm -hmm. whereas happy hardcore was kind of vocals. Yeah, no, the stuff, the stuff that I, I do for this really client is all, um, it's kind of more mm -mm. trancey actually, but just if trance was going really, really okay. fast. But um, it's faster than trance, but it's, so it sounds more like techno techno, but it's got melodies and stuff on it. So it's got song bits on it and all that. Okay. Um, but uh, I can't do that. Yeah, but uh, but I don't believe you that there's not that one. There must be one genre. Correct? I'm not the, mad keen on like. You actually, you know, I hate. I hate um, like acid jazz. You know, um, any that kind of like when it's like really super clever kind of funky jazz stuff. Um, and don't get me wrong, like I love Prince when he's doing a lot of that kind of stuff. But then he just goes a, wee, a bit mm -hmm. too out there and there's that kind of certain style of that kind of stuff I'm like you just you're really great musicians but I don't care you know I'm just yeah. like <laughs> give me a tune and it's like it's all very impressive <laughs> great great but it's soulless mm -hmm. and it's just a bunch of notes yes. and it's not you know I'm always yeah. about melodies for me it's always about, no matter what it yeah. is it's going to be a melody and, I've, um, and, I, and I listen yeah. to everything pop rock country dance music yeah. um, as, long, as long as there's Tunes. For me, it's always a bit songwriting. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I 100% I, I agree. I do think in the last 10 years, I have started to love jazz a lot more. Just yeah, jazz. I love, don't get me wrong, yeah, um, I love jazz. I and my, and my dad, grown up. my yeah. dad started the Glasgow... Kulikazi Frio. Yes. <laughs> he started the <laughs> Glasgow Jazz Festival uh, with a gentleman called Did Ewan he? Williams. Yes, back in 1988. Wow. Um, yeah. That's clever. Yeah, um, he's... I love, I do love jazz. Yeah. Um, but, you know, again, it's like, I love all that classic stuff, you know, like the Gershwin stuff and, you know, um, yeah, not, not heavy, you know. Yeah, yeah. Unless it's live. That actually sounded really if quite convincing, live, like a trumpet solo there. It, it did actually. Weird. That, was, yeah, that was sounded weird. like a trumpet, zolo, a trumpet solo over Zoom is what it sounded like. I was like an impersonation of what that is. <laughs> Many people will ask for uh -huh, that. It's okay. kind of like, that's so, exactly the sound okay. we're looking for. Um, yeah, this was... <laughs> it was actually Amy, Amy Winehouse that got me into jazz. Yeah, see, that's pop. I just, she, it was, it, it's I'm, jazz yeah. pop, but she, I mean, what what an absolute legend. I mean, and that's just class oh music. 
yeah but also she if you if you listen to quite a lot of her live um, mm -hmm. recordings she'll always have like a little chat at the mm -hmm. end so she would say artists names and I'm Who's like that? never heard and then you go on yeah. and then you're like you explore and Billy just, Holiday like, and all that kind of stuff it's just yeah absolutely it just she was just awesome awesome so yeah yes um yeah so for me I mean there's there's not really much you know limitations in terms of like if, if I like it I like it um mm -hmm. Yeah, and I mean, and I and I run the yeah. gamut from making electronic music, you know, um, an awful lot of days to picking up a guitar, or picking up a, <laughs> picking up a piano, you know, pick up a piano, um, or playing the piano, <laughs> <laughs> and doing that. So it's like I love, you know, I play all sorts of different instruments. So it depends on what you know what, what the style is or what I'm in the mood for, or all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So. Um, there's that. Yeah. And do you listen to a lot of music just like obviously now that you've moved into social media and marketing, mm -hmm. quite a lot of that you don't have to be like, what I mean is when you're doing your kind of admin -y type of things, do you listen to music no. alongside that? No. Or you don't? No. Um, I find it very difficult to, to just listen to music because whenever you're a producer, you just completely dissect it. You know, you, you're listening to it and you're going, yeah. oh, okay, I did that there and I did that. So like, That's it, a bit yeah, yeah, like yeah, yeah. If, <laughs> ordinarily pre-lockdown, you know, my wife and I would go out for a meal and we'd sit in a restaurant and what happens is my face just glazes over and she would just mm -hmm. go, mm -hmm. who produced the record? Because I, ah. I'm hearing whatever the music is in the background. I'm going, oh, what's that? Or yeah. worse than that, um, depending on where, where we're in, I'll actually stand up and go, close to speaker with my phone and Shazam it if I don't recognize the music. I'm like, what the hell's that song? You know, and I, I do that all the time. Um, and so, so it's kind of like, it's a blessing and a curse, you know, but, um, yeah. so you can't yeah. really switch it off. So I don't really listen to music to relax like that. Um, mm -hmm. I listen because it's, you're, you're analytical yeah. with it. Uh, I'll listen to music yeah. to, to probably more often than not to study it, you know, um, and because I'm yeah, like, oh yeah, I want yeah. to listen to that kind of stuff just now or to get in to that zone or that headspace. There isn't anything gigs wise that I haven't done. Like you na like yeah. name the a kind of establishment and I've probably done that, you know, we've done all the pubs. And... Well, if you've been, been to Kemlin Social Club then. Yeah, I mean, I all the social you. clubs and, go you know, golf clubs, bowling clubs, miners clubs, Air Force bases, Army bases. Um, wow. All that kind of stuff, nightclubs and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the thing is about all of that though is that um, it it's all about people, and you get to know people, and you get to know human mm -hmm. behavior, which is really says Greg bringing it back to business. That oh yes, this is sorry. Sorry, <laughs> we do this. that <laughs> marketing is really all about human behavior and mm -hmm. studying human behavior. Yes. See what I did there? Seamlessly yes. brought that. Oh, it was good. Together. Sweet. Yeah, um, and the thing yeah. is, it's so true. Um, and I first met you through your corporate traveler um, job, um, and yeah, and that's people, people, people. Um, yeah. Tell me how you got into that yep. in the first place. I, sorry, see, see what I did? That was a bit of a kind of like rap city, move. Honestly. What's up? Right, sorry. Go. <laughs> So I worked at Corporate Traveller for five and a bit years, just before um, lockdown. I was thinking, for some reason, I had Ice Ice Baby in mm -hmm. my head and I couldn't get it out. So that's why that was a little bit slow there. Stop collaborating. Let's sit. Yeah. Right. Okay. Carry on. Business, Greg. Business, right. Um, so, <laughs> so Corporate Traveller, no, I, I, I worked for Corporate Traveller for five years. So I started in, 90, in, in 95, 2015. You travelled back in time. And I loved it, I did. Um, I loved it. I, I loved every second of it. It's It was part of the Flight Centre brand. And it was my first kind of job that, because I always loved sales, yeah. but I liked the consultative sales. You know, I, I really liked, so it's fine selling you a kitchen or a door or an advertising space or, I mean, I've done, I've done so many different things, but I just loved getting to know companies and knowing that it was absolutely the best yeah. choice for them. And then getting to be like, 
I've got friends, like actual Facebook friends, that were my clients or, or prospects in, 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 my, in, in my role now and in my yeah. role then. Um, and then linking them up with other people and collaborating that. Well, I said collaborate twice, but like collaborating with them. Maybe that's why <laughs> I had this baby in my head. <laughs> so, um, so I loved it. I loved it. But but what I knew about <laughs> Glasgow, come on, Greg, we need to keep it <clears> together <throat> here, <laughs> is that people only buy from people especially I'm you're talking about millions no, of pounds yeah. worth of, of business travel so you need to have that element of trust and the only way that people will do that is if they know you or if someone can vouch for you so that's why I started obviously networking constantly but then that's why I started my own networking mm -hmm. event um to be able to come across because it's it, What's been beautiful about, so I was made redundant last July and then in a really fortunate position that I had quite a few different job offers and um, so I didn't have to apply for Brilliant. anything um, and the, the current job that I'm in was was made for me and um, they hadn't had a BDM before so it's just been brilliant since I've had a really positive lockdown um, and I think that when I hear people say, so, I've, so I, I'll get in touch with my clients from my last job, um, and now I'm talking about marketing mm -hmm. or websites, and um, they're like, Cara, I trusted you then, I'll yeah. trust you now. And, and that's a such a Scottish way of doing things as well. So um, really, a, a Corporate Traveller really made me the, the type of um, business development manager that I am now, um, because I've got the freedom to do what I wanted to do. And now I'm in such a cool, industry that I'm really, really passionate about. I didn't know much about travel. In fact, I knew nothing about travel right. when I started there. The, How did the he get the job? Like being... Hi, <laughs> it's me and you. I know nothing. Employ me. <laughs> so, so my sister worked for corporate travel. Right. And so she just kept an eye on things. And for business development, they had always said, up until 2015, they'd always said that you need to know uh, you you either need to have a background in travel or you need to have no actually that was it or a university degree and it had been like that for a long long time and then in 2015 they decided to say actually what if we just change this and actually just say it doesn't matter if you've got a background in travel if you've got a background in sales come on mm. down and so I was the first intake of, of not having travel but um <laughs> let me tell you a story so you, you go down to London for boot camp for three and a half weeks for your training and you're, you're, you're amongst travel consultants. So travel consultants obviously have to have a minimum of five years of travel experience because right. you can't book stuff if you don't know the capital or whatever, whatever. So there's about 30 of us in this boot camp, all with travel experience and me, who the furthest I'd been, I'd been to Gran Canaria. Nice. That's where I had been. I didn't think Zimbabwe counted since I left there when I was six. Um, and I couldn't, can't remember really much about it. So it said, where is your, so the, the, the kind of icebreaker was, where is your most favorite place that you've traveled to in the world? Mm -hmm. So I put Scotland <laughs> because it is. <laughs> and I just, I, and I would probably change it now that I've traveled a yeah. little bit because of that job, but I still think it is. I think Scotland's, Scotland's wonderful. So um, yes, in answer to your question, how did I get it? Because I'm amazing. Goes without saying. So, did you end up doing a lot of travel then with the job? <laughs> we doing uh, like, I, I uh, can't tell you how many times I went to London. Did you do like fam trips so and that kind of thing? It's like no, uh, they were mainly for the travel consultants. Right. And um, but but the first time that I so that sounds ridiculous. So there were fam trips, but mainly, mainly there for travel consultants who are actually booking it. So um, but at flight center they, they loved parties they still love parties i can't they, I'm travel sure industry still people like to party when opens up again oh my gosh absolutely crazy so for every uh, their end of financial year was in june so the first weekend of july we would all go down to london so there's four thousand of us go down to london to the excel center and so this was my first one um, when i started and and they had said um so we're going to do all the corporate bunch of goodness so there was 400 of us um we're going to do a competition so i want you to be able to write a story um about a product i can't even remember what it was now greg but so and then so we're all walking 
to said conference all have been out till like four o'clock the night before and I'm like oh I've not prepped so I so my daughter was like six at the time or seven at the time so I'm used to writing once upon a time to and I remember walking across and writing this story because the, the the managing director had told us to write the story and um went in and then there was like a story off so we had to like go up against each other and again and then until there was like four of us and then so when we were standing on the stage and I got to the final four um the um general manager said right okay so you want to know what the prize is then and I just thought it would be like I don't know like a bottle of champagne or something like that so the prize is business class BA tickets to anywhere in Asia wow and I felt my legs I felt my legs go I, but I had written it and that's when the introvert came out because I was like oh my god I'm gonna be sick like this is what am I doing mm -hmm. like these are my peers oh it was awful so anyway I did it and won it and so went to the toilet and cried because I was like I can't have won what do you mean this wee girl from Sight Hill in Edinburgh has won BA tickets to like bus and mm. business class. So um, roll on six months and myself and my best friend Julia went to Hong Kong and Vietnam over five days wow. business class. So now I'm spoiled because I can't, I can't even think of going on a 12 hour journey no. <laughs> if it wasn't business class. It's, what do you do? You mean you sit beside other people that aren't part there's of your... An, there's an old expression yeah. that is... Um, trying to remember it um it's something to the effect of uh the church mouse can't go back to the country once it's seen the city yes you know what i mean yes i love that i've never heard that before i don't i, 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 I might have just made it up but um i don't think it did um but but it makes sense and as long as it kind of makes does. sense i'm the church mouse yes I know, because then, at the, uh, and also, I would always get BA flights down to city when I was going down right. to London. That was once every week or once every two weeks, and so I'm, I've been completely spoiled. So I don't know if Susie Fraser is ready for my demands. I was just going to say, I mean, this is going to be it's pretty for long. It's kind of like here's my rider. Oh, yeah. uh, I only want blue M and M's. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you end up now. So you're at the Adeo Group. Yep. Yes. We finally got around to talking about the Adele group. It. It's only 45 minutes, 48 minutes in. Wow. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Don't act surprised. Though, no, right? not at all. Definitely. So, yeah, I'm at... Um, so, I now am working at Adele. So, when I, when I was made redundant, you think a bit differently, don't you? Because, um, because obviously, we're in a pandemic. So, I wanted a company that, that not only had been solid throughout um, lockdown, but an industry that, that that kind of was thriving mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and and also when when Susie um phoned me originally and was talking about the role I could see that I just wanted a career again because I because there was nothing that was going to stop me being in business travel a corporate traveler and I just really wanted a career again and I wanted progression yeah. and I, I I wanted to make a difference um and a day are just that so I was really comfortable with the marketing side because I think as as a networker and using LinkedIn as my main source of, of um BDing, I was really comfortable and I understood all the, the, the terminology yeah. on the um, PR marketing and comm side. But the web development and design, I was like, I don't know what you're talking about. So it's been a steep learning curve sure. from that side. Um and, but I've just I've just loved it, and 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 it's the first time I've worked for a small company, so my voice is heard so much. Like my 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 opinions are, really really matter, and there's a there's a clear. I'm I'm one of the senior executives, so there's a there's a clear pathway to directorship yeah. as well. So um, I've just I've just loved. But you're it. feeling hard by it's that as well. It's been tricky working from home. Absolutely, absolutely, and and molding it. So obviously, I'm the first B BDM. Um, the, the plan is, hopefully, that I'll get another BDM um, towards the end of this year and then just move, move on from there and, and, and see because Adele were my clients at Corporate Traveling. Right, okay. So I just, I, I, I love the, the, the culture and I, I loved everything about it, but I can really see the, our difference to competitors yeah. as well. Um, and it's, it's definitely the people side of things. So, um, yeah, to be in a company where you actually feel like you, you, your opinion matters and it's it's valued is is 
brilliant and I'm just back to chatting to companies again and it's not a hard sell it's a consultative sell and, and, and what's great about marketing as you would know is that there are so many different choices of what you can yeah. do in order to get the result that they're looking for um, and sometimes it's trial and error and sometimes you're like no this is exactly what you need um, and I love that it's so interesting to me um, uh, yeah I love it I love right. it no, I think th this is the whole thing with with marketing, and like you say, there's you know so many different solutions, and it's whenever you, if you're dealing with somebody who isn't creative, and they can like, so what can you do? And you can like, what well, can do? What's your budget? And you, know, there's so many variables that can just be, you know, overwhelming. You know, rather than you need, you can have yeah. to narrow it down a bit. You know, um, but there's just yeah. so so yeah. many options um, to giving the client exactly what they want. I mean, and I think that's the thing for me more than anything else is, yes, we could come up with anything, but it's gotta be right. It's gotta be on message. It's gotta be right for your brand, yeah. right for your brand values and resonate with you, you know? Yep. Um, yep. And it has to achieve results. Mm -hmm. It has to at the, at, at the end of the day. Um, and I, I do love that we, we rebranded, well, not rebranded. We also have the name, the outcome agency. So it's, it made it much easier for me to talk to companies and say, right, what what are you, what do you want from this? What's your ideal outcome? Like, do you want twenty yeah. percent more sales, or do you want brand awareness for this yeah. certain project, or, or or whatever? That's fine. We'll do that, and then it all works backwards from them. And then I just speak to the, the experts, and we have a huge discovery session, and and that's what works. And it's getting into. I love it, and that's why like you're exactly the same, Greg. To see your, I mean, I don't want to see all parts of your mind because I'm already slightly scared of quite a lot of it. But your creative mind, when it comes to like all these, we were watching the dad dancing the mm -hmm. other night. Um, all these creative, way, like I love working with people mm -hmm. like that. Like, what about this? Oh, like I would never have thought of that. And I find that I'm becoming more creative because of that. As no, well. totally. I love yeah. it. Um, I love it. I mean, and for me, the it's it's like I was. I'm sure I said this to you fairly recently, that I'm not interested in in um, building an agency. Um, I could have wanted mm -hmm. to, but it's not where I want to to be. Um, I love being yeah. creative every day. I love having something different mm -hmm. every day, and getting to actually be creative and have fun doing what it is that I do. Whereas yeah. if I was in the thick yeah. of I'm running a business and then I've got employees and I'm like, oh my God, yeah. I don't want to do that. It's like grown up. Whereas and you have to deal with people no. and stuff. Yeah. No. Whereas I get to be stupid <laughs> um, and do a lot of daft nonsense. Uh, and then people go, Greg, can we pay you to do that daft nonsense? Yes, you can. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. And, absolutely. And, and that, that's absolutely. fun. And I think more than anything else is that whenever you really, really enjoy what it is that you're doing and whatever you're passionate about it, people can see that people can sense it and they, they feed off yeah. your energy and they're like, I want to be close to that. Um, and mm -hmm. you know, and it's, and I think that's how you get success. Whenever you, you're obviously enjoying what it is that you're doing, you draw people to you. It's funny you're saying about outcomes yeah. and that, that sort of things. My dad, who is, um, he's retired now, but he's a marketing genius. He, um, he would always say, and I quote this all the time, and I, this is something that I actually ask clients all the time. Um, how would you define success? It's always going to be the first question you're going to ask, oh, you know? Um, love and that. so it's, but it's just what you're saying there about outcomes, you know, how do you define success? Mm -hmm. So what, what is, what is it that's yeah. going to be the, the metric that we're going to use here. Um, and I think that's yep. what it comes down to. It's like, sometimes it's just, it's brand awareness. It's doing something that people are like, yeah. wow, that just says so much about who oh. we are and what, what we're about. And yeah. that's a great thing that we can use as this is who we are. And this represents yep. who we are. And then there's other things where we're yeah. wanting to get sales and blah, blah, blah. And it's a different thing. Yep. Um, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's just cool having like a complete different portfolio of that as well. And I've not really been used to that. That but basically anyone could be my prospect. Do, do you yeah. know? So you're talking about this in one meeting, and then you're completely over to like a B two B side on this one, and then oh, I, 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 and I love that. It makes it so interesting, and I, I just cannot wait for the office to to hear all of that going round, mm -hmm. and, and and to be able to to be part of that like physically I think that that will be super cool it's great I mean 
we have absolutely managed um, virtually, but I think there's something about being creative that is nice. Oh yeah, it's, ni it's nice when you can physically. actually be creative in the room. I mean, for yeah. me this evening, I actually have my first recording studio session with a client in town tonight um, for <gasps> like months. Um, so I'm in the studio tonight from seven to 11. Um, Mine is definitely not. No active at half past no but it. um no, no, yeah so i um i do <laughs> tend to get quite a lot of work done then whenever i'm not being distracted by everything else you know um yeah isn't it funny how we've learned that as well mm -hmm. like i'm i'm a if i wake up at half past six then i'll come through to the office and i'm like oh oh and i get really and i didn't know that about myself that that's actually the time that I feel like I'm most productive. And, and obviously you wouldn't get an opportunity to do that if you were in the office because you're getting ready yeah, and all that yeah. kind of stuff. It's funny how we, we've we discovered these yeah, weird I mean, things about ourselves. I mean, the thing is with, with me now is that I have a, a complete recording studio at home. I'm in it just now. And it's the same setup mm -hmm. as I've got in town. So there's nothing that I can't mm -hmm. do here. So the only, the only difference is I can't record clients. So they have to come into my studio in town. So that's yeah. why that's yeah. there yeah. so that's a different thing so um yeah but um yeah i'm so I'm, it's it's being able to if i come up with an idea just go right i'll go do that and i can literally work any any yeah. any hour of the day on whether it's video whether it's audio whatever um mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i probably won't be singing at that, 11 o'clock at night so i'm not annoying the neighbors and or my wife oh your your neighbors must be used to it though, um no? There's getting used to it and hating it, so there's. <laughs> so I think I'm going to be slightly more, um, you know, kinder to them. Um, actually, that's that's been a really good thing about the whole lockdown situation. All of us in this on our street, we have a WhatsApp group for the street, and everybody kind of looks out for one another, oh, which we that. didn't have before, and everybody's really got to know one yeah. another, which has been really nice. Yeah. Which we weren't expecting. Oh, you must be the same as me because I I knew who was in my street by like that's number nine that's number mm -hmm. two and then um, i did say that i've got really really close to my neighbor two doors along and i said that to her the other day i was like there is no way i would have even remembered your name but we've been drunk in the garden together we've like she we do favors for mm -hmm. each other and i'm like i'm so blessed that i got to know you and there is no way because i was like again the introvert side of me i don't want anyone to know my business i don't want anything and now because you've got people taking in your parcels and and like having the, the kind of social distance drinks in the gardens and stuff it's so lovely to have neighbors yes yeah, no it's great i ended up mixing it oh yeah, i thought you were gonna sing it greg greg i thought we were on the seat ah oh, no no neighbors i'm not gonna start neighbors, singing the theme no. tune to neighbors why because it's not the it's, 80s it's, a, it's, a ch it's... <laughs> <laughs> and they've changed them it's such a good theme song thank everybody you needs good name. <laughs> that's all you're getting chin yeah Chin, chin. We, we, I was trying to educate Lily in the Kylie and Jason. amazingness of. Oh, I did that. I did that because I started singing Neighbours, mm -hmm. and I, she gets annoyed that I sing to her all the time. At her, probably, um, all the time. Um, but no, I did um, show her Kylie and Jason stuff. But TV adverts in the nineties. Mm -hmm. That these kids are missing out. If Lily needs to watch something on like an actual TV, like a channel, channel four, and like wait for the adverts, she's like, mm -hmm. what is this? Like, why have they got these adverts? So I did a full hour of TV adverts and their amazing tunes. And I, I felt like it was one of the best educations that she's ever no, had. No, totally. She didn't like it. Um, and the thing but is, it's educational, like but it's Way. also related to your business. <laughs> Sorry, we'd keep going off business chat. Sorry, Greg um, anyway, I'm, I'm really going to wrap this up because otherwise, this is I'm going to like <laughs> run out of hours in the day. Has there been anything no, beneficial or whatsoever. anything out of this? No, um, great. But I'm not. I'm not going to cut any of it out. There you go. That's <laughs> what poor soul I is going to no sit idea. and watch is all anybody? of that? I don't. I don't really think so. We should we should find out that'd be so funny that'd be at, hilarious at 50, farah you know who probably will is no farah. no no farah will pretend and and lie farah beautifully she'll listen she'll to watch. the first 
five minutes into the last five minutes and she'll say, I loved when you did that bit about, I'm like, you made that up, Farah. You didn't listen to the whole thing. And Cara's tenants tattoo. Exactly. Yeah, you know, like. <laughs> Can't believe she's got a tenants you just, tattoo. You just, you just skimmed through it, didn't you? That'll be what it is. No, Farah won't listen to it. I can't think of anyone. No. Actually, but God God bless the person that decides Indeed. to, because it's... Um, Cara, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you, Greg. Thank you. Um, you're very welcome. Uh, and great to talk absolute nonsense with you for an hour. <laughs> um, oh, before you scoot off... Uh, well... Speckled with a little bit mm -hmm. of... Um, this Indeed. Chat. There was a little bit in there. Um, before you yeah. scoot off, uh, we'll stop recording, but I, I'm, I'm going to... I've got something... A marketing thing I need to show you after this, right? That's okay, all I'm saying. Cool. And I'm dropping okay. it in there just now so people go, what is that? I'm so excited. Anyway, Kara, thank you very I much indeed. So we'll do the pretend <laughs> wrap up. <laughs> thank, now, you, right? thank you very much for joining me. Okay. And, uh, thank you. And thank you. I'll see you soon.